Going fast, it's what they do. In fact, about 500 knots fast. That's approximately 575 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, you might be used to going around 65 miles per hour down the highway in your car. The fastest car in the world is 273 miles per hour, which equals approximately 238 knots. Most people couldn't dream of going that fast, but for fighter pilots, it's reality. I think that being uh, probably the biggest challenge in flying, uh, flying F-18s is just the speed the aircraft moves. You're covering over eight miles a minute going that fast, so you just have to be thinking so far out in front of the jet, and not only are you just flying the jet, but you're trying to operate the systems to accomplish your mission, which ultimately is supporting the Marines on the ground. We do our low altitude training at about 300 feet above the ground, so when you're going 500 knots that close to the ground, the ground's just whizzing by. It's a, it's a cool feeling. When you're going that fast up higher, you don't really have the sensation. It's kind of like flying a commercial airliner. You know, you look out the window, you can't tell you're going 400 or 500 knots, but you know, you look at you look inside your, your instruments, you're like, damn, I'm hauling. Throughout history, people like Medal of Honor recipient Pappy Boyington and movies like Top Gun have demonstrated what it takes to be a fighter pilot. If you go back to World War I, you had little, uh, little airplanes that flew really slow. Um, you started off with guys that were just taking pictures of the battlefield, so um, stuff that we do with satellites now, if you kind of think about it that way. So those things evolved to uh, pilots bringing handguns and shooting each other with rifles and pistols uh, to finally mounting uh, a machine gun on the top of those airplanes. Fast forward to World War II, you got high-powered, prop-driven airplanes uh, that are pretty soon going to transform into the first jets uh, in that time frame. So now you have guys going out, dropping bombs on bad guys, and then uh, and then maybe doing a lot of actually doing a lot of aerial combat. And you take all that and you think about Navy aviation specifically, and you put those airplanes on a boat. And now you have a country that's got worldwide reach, and there's nothing anybody else can do about it. Into today's age, where the jets are going so fast, the results can just be catastrophic for uh, for our enemies. These Marines fly the F-A-18 Hornet, an aircraft that has a giant arsenal. The Hornet can carry a ton of ordnance uh, from 500-pound bombs, 1,000-pound bombs, 2,000-pound bombs, laser-guided bombs. So, I mean, you, you can do a real precise strike and support those guys, or you can drop what they call a dumb bomb, which isn't guided and, uh, you know, still have a great effect. Kill a lot of the enemy if necessary. So uh, the, the Hornet, Hornet has a great capability. Also has a 30 millimeter cannon in the nose that holds about 600 rounds, uh, which, is, which is really fun to fire. As fast movers, they have to concentrate on hitting their target at plus or minus three seconds. All the while, the pilot is enduring some significant physical stress. This stress is known as the G-force or gravitational force, which is the measurement of acceleration felt as weight. Uh, we do a thing that's called a hick maneuver. So when you're in the airplane and you're doing maneuvers, you're putting G-forces on your body, right? So once you get to about three and four Gs, uh, which is a lot more than you can put up with your car. Uh, for example, your body kind of, the blood starts to move in different places, heart rate starts to increase, things like that. So you got to train your body now to go from three to four Gs all the way to seven Gs. So we'll tighten our leg muscles real hard to try to keep the blood up, and then you breathe in a very specific way. You just get used to it and uh, it helps you keep your vision, essentially, and keep you from passing out. All this for one primary mission, support Marines on the ground. I'd run if I was the enemy. I mean, I'd take, take cover. That's got to be what they're thinking, because, I mean, we can rain down fire. From what I heard from some of, the, uh, some of my infantry friends uh, after coming back from Iraq was, hey, you know, how was it when we were on station compared to when we weren't? Was there a difference? Uh, basically, what they all told me is once they can hear the jet noise on station, they don't come out, they don't fight, they go hide. So just imagine if you were seven foot tall, 400 pounds, and you're fighting kindergartners. <laughs> and now these and dozens of other Marine fighter pilots are strapped inside one of the U.S.'s fastest, fiercest, and most lethal combat weapons. Fear
Mars Tower. This is Thermal Actual. Mission accomplished.